Hey, what's going hey. on then? Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited! Yeah. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Cherries Live event, uh, The Seven Secrets. Um, I'm joined by... I'm waiting for Titanus to change the camera. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined by Jeff Brace. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> and happy. Uh, hey, what's hello, going on? Hello, hello. We're off to a good start. How's everyone doing? We see everyone in the chat right now. So it's so good to see everyone. Magic Elon, what's going on, my friend? Uh, King OK, good to see you in the chat. And Jen the Magician, how's everyone doing? Now, uh, how are you? I'm doing fantastic today. Super excited, probably because I have some C4 in me. Sponsored by Cherry's Casino? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's why we chose the C for Cherry. I love it. I love it. You get a good night? Great night. Great, Great night. night. Slept amazingly well. How did you sleep? Like this? Oh, I slept just like me. <laughs> Which way? <laughs> hey. How did you sleep? The other way. Uh, the, other the other way. Oh, oh. Sorry about that, of course. No, it's fine. No, it's all good. It's, it's all good. It. So, who are you excited to see today? I'm excited to see Jeremy. Jeremy? Jeremy. Really, everyone. Mm. Really, everyone. But I like the. Uh, the, the little card, the card slides, the card yeah. slides mm. all that stuff. I'm also excited uh, to see photography tips and also Joel. I know Joel is going to be doing some yeah, social yeah, media yeah, stuff. Yeah, Joel will be on teaching everything. Uh, but if you can understand his Irish accent, which is a bit hard, but if people can understand me, which Joel will be fine. sometimes you, you, I ask you like yeah. 20 times. There, there's already people in the chat telling me to um, speak slower. So good. Times. And you never do no, that. No, no, no. It's part of built in. It's built ingrained to me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Jeff? Who are you excited to see? I'm excited to see Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Lloyd. And Are you just reading the list of people? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just putting some concentrated thought into oh, it. Oh, I, I see. You're thinking. Yeah. yeah. Those are two, two of the top ones for sure. But yeah. I'm excited for everyone. Well, good question there, um, Jeff. What is the seven <laughs> secrets? <laughs> so the seven secrets... <laughs> oh, George off camera. Uh, the seven uh, secrets are the... Uh, we've, got, we've got a whole bunch of uh, artists from across the magic industry. So we've got cardistry people... Um, yeah. some, like you said, card slots, card um, slides, gimmick builders, uh, photographers. People, photographers, yeah, social media experts, all coming across to teach you things about their field of expertise. Exactly. And they've got seven minutes to do it. Otherwise, we cut them off. Yeah. <laughs> seven, it's like an, it's we seven, get buzzed off. Yeah, that's it. We're coming in. Gah, get out of here. So, uh, yeah, that should, should be a bit of fun. So, like you mentioned, we've got Jeremy Griffith. Uh, Jason Knowles. Also, we want to mention, we want it to be as interactive as humanly possible. So feel free to write in, let us know uh, what you guys want to know, if you have questions. Also, if you guys want people backstage, they're going to be reading the comments. You can get them to do funny things to us if you want. Yeah, like, you like challenges. <laughs> like if you, if you go, hey, I want to see, have chug a bottle of water while he does the next spill, by all means, put it in the chat and then... Michelle or George behind the camera uh, will come over. We've got Titanus behind the camera. Yeah, Mr. Hey, T. Hey, T Dog Millionaire, what's up, boy? <laughs> oh, and the little hey, yeah, the, scary oh, thing what? back there. What, what the was heck that? was that? What was that? No. Hey. <laughs> 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 so we'll, uh, what we'll do is, yeah, they'll come and you give them challenges. They'll yeah. like, get it and come and give it to us, and we'll do the challenges throughout the stream. And also, too, throughout the stream, we'll be having giveaways. So we'll be asking for things during the stream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, so... We're going to also have a little moment of ASMR. So... <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was good. I love that. There we go. Well, <laughs> is that thing just moving? Yep. Titanus gives us a thumbs up that that was just moving. Well, he's terrified. All right, so also, did we want to do uh, our first giveaway, I guess, which is kind of like maybe we do a screenshot. So we'll do a, a pose for you guys, and then uh, you screenshot the thing and then post it to your story, tag at Murphy's Magic, and we'll choose someone out after our first guest. So what kind of pose do you want? To, on the count of three, just pose, and then people can screenshot. Great? Yeah. Great. And yeah. then, yeah, just put it on your stories to say at Murphy's Magic. So, so the pose is... Yeah. It, 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 Oh, that was good. Oh, yeah, I love that. Right. So, uh, <laughs> what's going on? This is mayhem. I can't wait for what's going to happen. All right. So, we should probably jump into our first guest for tonight. Um, Bovier. Magic Adams, like Hashtag Bovier. I think it's a mixture of us. If we had like a, a love child. I, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need I, to do a Photoshop. If you guys want to do a Photoshop of what a baby of Bo <laughs> and me together would look like, put it up in the chat. We'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. I'd and if you want to do the trifecta... 
Oof. Ooh, Better yeah. yet. Jeff Price, lower half. <laughs> me, up middle half. And then have at the top half. Cause... No? Okay, no one's interested. Yep. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, probably. everyone's just saying about your ASMR is uh, it's either it sounds like a fart zipper or an eargasm. So... Bit of both those are good. Yeah, ASMR. No, I, n- n- All right, so <laughs> <laughs> first guest for tonight, we should jump in. It's Jeremy Griffiths. You might know him from such films as Handsome Man in LA. Um, that's where he lives, right? California. California, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah I should have yeah. went with that. Everyone would have believed it. Uh, so you might know Jeremy Griffith, awesome card slot magician. Um, like you mentioned, he's incredible with his hands. And even when you put a deck of cards in it, even it better. Yeah, 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 even yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeremy, when you're ready, take it away, my friend. So let's assume you, like me, have gotten your grubby little mitts on one of these bad boys. Every single deck comes with a gaff card, a double backer, that you can use right out the box. So let me show you something fun that you could do with it. So the only thing that you care about is keeping this double backer on top of the deck before you begin. And you can do it whilst looking like you're shuffling the cards in a very simple manner. Turn the deck so that the top is face out, and then peel off one card, which is the double backer, and then just shuffle off like normal. And then do it again, except now as you're shuffling, when you get toward the end of the deck, just start peeling the cards one at a time until you run out of cards. And that just brings that double backer back to the top. If you want to get fancy with the spices, you can take the deck and turn it the other way so that the face is pointed out. And as you go to drag off the first packet with your thumb, these fingers grip on to that top card, which is the double backer, and peel it along with that packet. And then you can just shuffle off like normal. And the nice part is that one actually looks pretty good at speed. Okay, so here we go. You're locked and loaded. You've got that double backer sitting on top of the deck, despite the fact that you have thoroughly shuffled the cards. And now I say, if you ever separate a small amount of cards from the rest of the deck, it can make them very nervous. And it makes them want to hide their faces from you. And they are very good at hiding their faces from you. Let me show you what I mean. And then I turn the deck face up and I say, I'm just going to use this jack and its mate. And then I just go looking for the other black jack. Right? It's a very easy way to locate a pair. And then as I turn this deck face down again, I want to catch a break underneath this top card, the double backer. And you can do that a couple of ways. Right? You could push it off, drag it back, and then catch the break that way. You could do a pinky count where you just drag your pinky down the side of the deck and make it pop. Or one of the most intriguing ways is you could set your thumb on this corner very lightly, but don't move your first finger out of the way, and then try to drag the card off diagonally and that causes that back corner to bow and you could just set it on top of your pinky. Anyway, however you want to do it, you just set those on top of the deck and on top of that double backer and you say, watch, if I take these cards and I separate it from the rest of the deck like this, you can tell it's making them nervous because they're shaking. Anyway, and it makes them want to hide their faces like this. And I'm not kidding you, they are very good at hiding their faces and you can tell because you won't see them. And that's when I peel off the double backer and I just show that the faces are gone. And this is sort of a fun proof, like right out the gate. If you're ballsy, you could do this. You can take this card and as you turn it over like this, you can learn to do a Stuart Gordon, which is this motion right here. And it turns it over as one as you bookend it on top of there. And that's actually sort of a fun exercise just to practice your double handling, right? But you show that the faces are gone. And then as I go to grab the deck again and say, if I put them on the deck, I just separate these cards again, right? I just, all I do is I drag that card out so that way I can show both sides. I say, if I put them back on the deck, you can see that now they don't mind it as much and they're happy to show their faces to you. Right? And then you end clean because your double backer isn't involved anymore. You could put these on display as much as you want, as long as you put them back on the deck. Otherwise, that totally destroys the storyline. Anyway, that's something fun that you guys could do with the double backer provided by the cherries. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the hell out of the cherries like I have for the past several years. And I'll see you soon. So, welcome back. Well, we uh, have just ducked off to uh, come up with another giveaway for you. Oh, here he is. <coughs> Sm- <laughs> Park or? That was a normal speed. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, was speed. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Did you, did you just run off to get a deck of cards because you wanted to practice what Jeremy just did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, should we, should we mm-hmm. try something? But I couldn't find that double backer. Oh, man. The, the cherries have double backers. Always. Always, always. Should we try, uh, try and cut to a card in the deck? Sure. What, all right. On the th- count of three, cut. 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 You already Anywhere? Cut. Yeah. Okay. What'd you cut to? 
Oh, baby. <laughs> not, oh, it's not hot. <laughs> Ton of hearts. Oh this, my god. This is what happens when we're off camera. But <laughs> all right, so we we everyone when we first signed up, we had an email giveaway uh, for when we first had the, the, the sneaky peeks of this to stay in contact, and it was meant to be a massive giveaway. So we have chosen two winners because we're gonna have one. Yeah. We can do two. We'll do two. Um we're gonna have what's up? Oh, we're frozen? We're experiencing some technical difficulties, please. Stay Well, we're back. The camera is just reconnecting, so that'll jump back on in a second. Fingers crossed. Uh, this is the whole. So the camera has reconnected on our end, but we are waiting for it to reconnect. Go to your face, try that FaceTime there. Uh... 
Change like the camera there as well. Change. So you change the FaceTime and then. No, no, no. Well, um. <laughs> I'm gonna go for BFE. <laughs>
Uh, again, if you guys have got um, some fun things to do in the chat, put in some challenges for us. But you can, if you want, you can stop commenting live fun as we will choose the winner uh, in just a second. But while that happens, uh, we're going to jump over to our next guest, who is Jason Knowles. He is an awesome, awesome gimmick builder. Yes. You might know him from such films as Flatpak. 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 Uh, he's coming on to teach you some really simple gimmicks you can do at your house with very simple stuff. Get your gimmick building going. You excited? I'm Let's excited. do it. Let's take Woo! a look. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Magic Lab. My name is Jason Knowles and today I'm absolutely delighted to be partnering with Murphy's and show you some really cool things with cherries. have a card selected so I'm a little bit lost in the middle of the deck and then we're actually going to use the design of these playing cards to help me figure out what your card was just watch the cherry queen of hearts way I can so maybe a dribble the cards and let the spectator put it back and now it's all about frame and reference so the first thing you're going to do is draw people's attention to the top card and the two cherries on the design really let that image sink in and then you need to get a break under the top two cards now I'm not going to teach this again because there's lots of resources out there on how to get a break I use a pinky count um, to get under the top two cards but you could use a push off and and come back on the two cards whatever works for you there's lots of resources out there to help you with that but you're going to turn two cards over as one and as you slide this joker off because that's a double backer um, there's no inconsistencies now all you're going to do is um, pinch the non uh, gimmicked pit on the back of the card and you're just going to tell them the cherries are going to help you find um, their card so you're going to start to shake it as you come down and tell them to watch as it slowly comes into focus and as you slow down they'll suddenly start to see that this cherry is a slightly different colour and then you can reveal the playing card in the pit and you've got an instant miracle. Super super simple so again gimmick cherry underneath a double backer, force your card, lose it, get a break, do a double, pick the card up with the face towards the spectator, pinch the non-gimmick pip 
and start to shake as you come down and then slowly reveal their playing card. So that's a super easy version that you can do straight out of the box. The more difficult version, let's say more difficult, it's not really difficult, but um, probably more visual, is you need to cut a set of cherries out from another playing card in your deck. And on the back, just where the stem is, just a tiny little bit of the stem, you're gonna put a little bit of stick on the back of that, whether that be double-sided sticky tape or a little glue dot roller or whatever. And you're gonna take your cherry that's got the playing card reveal on it, and you're literally just gonna stick this over the top. So you're gonna line it up perfectly, and then you're just gonna press down on that stem. And that looks super convincing. All you're gonna do is drop that on top of the deck, closest to you, and then routine-wise the same, force the card, lose it in the middle of the deck, but do it with this in play the whole time on top of the deck towards you. No one's gonna spot it. Um, it, it it's just gonna fly. It's, it's pretty invisible. So once you've lost the card in the middle of the deck, you're just gonna pitch this, pick this up, put the deck in your pocket out of the way. And then all I like to do is use my middle finger and swipe across the sort of line of these two cherries together. Um, and then literally just slide that off and you get this super visual moment where they've seen the two cherries and then you pull it away and now you've got some writing on there. Keep it pinched for a second between your middle finger and thumb as you kind of come down, drop it into finger palm and all the attention now is here on this card and you can show that you've just done an instant miracle. So there's something really nice that I love about that visual, just the idea of being able to um, keep it perpendicular so they can't see any discrepancies and just the idea of being able to just take it and just sort of wipe over it and now it shows that a playing card, I think that's super cool. So there you go, two uh, very simple ways to use the cherry pip as a playing card reveal. Um, hopefully you enjoyed uh, what you learned today and more importantly, hopefully you're enjoying cherries. Are we back? That's what? We're back baby! We're back? <laughs> Wait, what happened to gravity? Whoa! Ho -ho! Hey, cherries, that's not gravity. It sounded like Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa! Oh, Jason knows. Sorry, we're just practicing. That was amazing. We're just, yeah, we're just practicing on it. I'll give me the build upside down. I think I broke my mic. Oh, I did. Um, so, welcome back. What do you think about uh, Jason? Do you enjoy that? I loved it. Very good. Very cool with the cherries. Very cool with the cherries. Now, we did have a live fun chat thing on uh, YouTube. Thousands of comments were Thousands through. of comments. So, you chose a winner, Jeff. Who did you choose? I chose a winner, and it is Brazen Magic to win a beautiful cherries hat. Woo! Brazen <laughs> Magic! Congrats! So Brazen Magic, make sure you DM us saying, hat baby, and we'll send that out to you. Um, did we want to do a live fun chat giveaway on Facebook as well? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So anyone on Facebook watching, comment live fun, uh, and we'll choose someone on Facebook to win a hat as well. Again, in YouTube, you don't need to do that. We just did that. But you wanted to have a giveaway, your own. A little giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Giveaway. Yeah, a very giveaway. Yes, 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 yes so, 100%. Let's... So you were going to shuffle a deck? And choose a card out. What were you gonna? Were you gonna I've do? already done it. Oh, jeez! I've already done it in the middle. In the middle of this whole segment, yeah. I was shuffling the cards like this. Mm -hmm. I took one out uh -huh. and I placed it right. Oh, this bad there. boy right here. So what's the go? People have to guess. Start guessing. The first person who guesses that card will win. Uh, a, a, a date with you, was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about the first ever, uh, the next cherries before they're released anywhere else in the world, before they hit magic shops, anywhere, we will send you a deck of cherries, the new deck, um, to come out and, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Uh, you will choose, we'll send that deck out to you beforehand. So everyone's writing in the comment section now. Uh, yeah. Let's try it. All right, cool. So people Can you make some beats with cards? Oh, with beats. With cards. So you got to go like. Oh, we got someone that guess to make. Music with cards. I'll do this. I wish I could rap. <laughs> I don't know how. This is my best. I don't even know how to rhyme. Hey! This is the way we do with the cherries. Get them. Or, or drop your berries. <laughs> Come for the oh, shirt. Man. Yeah, so Can so leave? This um, awesome. we're going to have that yeah. available on iTunes. You're going to be able to download as your ringtone. Yeah, you know that's going to be a meme in the in, by tomorrow. There's going to be people going, have you seen the Cherries event when they rapped about berries? <laughs> and everyone's like, this is what the magic industry's come to.
And I'm, pl I'm proud of that. I'm yeah. proud. Um, I thought you guys... They also should not forget that the cherries come with a blank card, double backer. Who knows what this card is? Yeah, it, it could be a double backer. It could be a blank card. No one said that yet. Yeah, I mean, I can see it, so I... Already yeah, know. I, we already know what it is. Um, do you guys know what the card is? George no. and Michelle? No. Oh, okay. Cool. Then they don't even know. You guys can comment, and you might win. Um, <laughs> now, we do have a post on our Instagram and Facebook, which is the latest post, which is a picture of a, a notebook with all the seven artists. Um, go comment where you live on that, because uh, we, we're really excited by all the people in the chat. Go comment where you live, whether you live in the US, whether you live in the UK, Australia. Egypt, Mars, Jupiter, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So go comment where you live on that, and we will choose someone out at random to win a uncut sheet. I'm probably going to get in trouble for that. But we'll <laughs> yeah, an uncut what sheet. Color? What color? We, we have one here, right? Was it this one? Ooh, I don't want to Careful. Record. That's how Bo lost his job. <laughs> we have to treat this. A slightly damaged yeah. card. It won't be this one. This will be for me. No, probably. We, we could, uh, do you want to even sign it? We'll sign it. We can. If they, if they want us to. Ghost. These ghost. Are, that's ghost. Um, ghost. But yeah, we, if you guys want us to sign it. But yeah, comment where you live uh, on our Instagram uh, or Facebook post of the thing. I know people are in the comment section right now on YouTube commenting, but it has to be on Instagram or Facebook. Sounds on the post. from the Milky Way. Hey, I love to see. I love to hear it. But yeah, where are you tuning in from? And we'll send that uncut sheet out to you. Cool. Wow. Man, you know what I think we should do? Tell me everything. Tell what me everything. Mean? Everything. I think we should start going into our next guest. You guys want to see the next guest? <laughs> oh. So I think we should be going into the I next guest. I love what you're on about. So our next guest <laughs> is the insanely talented. You have seen, uh, you've probably seen her laser deal on, uh, uh, we, we shared it on all our socials because it was such an incredible idea. She's incredible with cards. She perfect with cardistry, card slides. Uh, Ashley Goodwin from the UK. Here she is to teach you some awesome moves. Ashley! Ashley! Goodwin and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a card flick that I incorporate into all of my cardistry and it looks a little something like this. So I'm going to be using the Cherry Casino playing cards in Sahara Green. It's one of my favourite colours. They do come in, I think it's over 10 different colours now. I have a bunch of them here. The design of the deck, I do magic as well, and I think it's just a nice clean design that looks really, really good in magic and cardistry because of the colours. I've only opened one of each colour. I've been using this for months and it's still pretty spot on. And it comes with a double backer and a blank, which is always useful for magic. Um, so yeah, it's one of my favourite decks at the moment and I'm going to be using it today. So let's get into the actual tutorial. The card flick that I'm going to be teaching is called Snap D. It's from Daniel Madison's release Dangerous, which was one of the first things that I bought when I got into magic. I think it's a really, really fun thing to learn. And when you get the hang of it, I promise you'll use it all the time. In Daniel's original teaching, he does it from his deck hand into his free hand. I like to do it from my free hand into the deck in the opposite way because I like to finish my cardistry routines with the move. I think it's a nice way to end it. But if you do want to learn the way that he originally teaches it, I think it's up on his YouTube channel now, or you can try and get Dangerous, where I learned it from. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, first things first, I'll teach you how to do Snap D, and then later on in the video, I'll show you a few different ways that I like to incorporate it into my cardistry. So the way that you hold the card, your middle finger is going to go on the back, your index finger and your ring finger are going to go onto the front, like this. I like to hold it so that my the edge of my nails at the bottom here are touching the edge of the card and they're spaced out just like so. You're going to apply a little bit of pressure with your middle finger and your index finger. This finger is just holding the card in place so it doesn't move while you're doing that. Uh, your index finger is going to slide down and off the card and that motion of when it pops off is what's going to give you the flick. If you're getting that kind of motion, you know that you're doing the right thing. Okay, so now we've practiced the grip of the card and we've practiced that flick motion a few times. What you might find will happen is the card will just move upwards and then back down and spin around a few times. So something like this. 
Okay, so the next part is the way that you get it to travel across. Again, just a quick example of what the card should look like if you just apply the pressure with your index finger. You snap it down and the card should just flick up slightly and then fall back. To get the card to move across, at the same time that you flick it, also flick your wrist upwards. This doesn't need to be a big motion, just enough to give the card some momentum to move in the direction you want it to. I've slowed this clip down to show you what I mean. So you'll see I get ready to do the move by bringing my hand down. And then as I flick the card with my index finger, my wrist flicks up at the same time, just there. I'll show you again. Once you combine these two moves, if you find that the card is flicking across, but it's going too far or not far enough or not in the right direction, it's just a case of adjusting it slightly until it starts to get more accurate. With enough practice, you'll get used to the amount of pressure that you need to apply when you flick the card. You'll get used to the positioning that you need to get it to land where you want to each time, and you'll be able to do it over and over again. One of my favorite things about this move is that you can make it as big or as small as you want. As you see there, it was quite small, but with a bit more pressure, you can get it to go much higher. Okay, so one of the ways that I like to use the snap bee in my cardistry is I will do a variation of the hot shot cut by a magician called Daryl, but I find the scissor motion quite tricky. I can't do it very well. Uh, scissor cut kind of, and then pivot the card out. Because I can't do that very well, I do the Charlie A version where you just drag the cards back down and pivot out. I can do that move a lot faster than the way it's supposed to be done. So for cardistry's sake, that's the way that I do it. The hot shot cut is a useful move to learn because it actually shoots out the bottom card. So if you control the card to the bottom, you can <laughs> try and do it for you. Shoot the card out and it's the selected card. But because when you're doing cardistry, it doesn't really matter what card gets shot across. I do this version. I can just do it a bit better most of the time. <laughs> wow. There we go. Do a little kind of flicker move and then snap D. <laughs> really cool especially if you can shoot it in slow motion and get the card to move about slowly it looks really good i hope you found this tutorial useful if you've got any more questions feel free to drop me a message uh, i would recommend checking out daniel madison's video for the original handling as well you might find that useful don't be put off it is quite a tricky move but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the practice. Um, again, I've been using the Cherry Casino Sahara Green playing cards today. One of my favourites. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh! Wait. That went away from me. Uh -huh, I did it! Hey! <laughs> did you do it? Oh, did it oh, wait. Oh, I can't. You get it? I'm trying to do it. I always forget where the middle finger goes on top or bottom. Yeah, we need to play that video again. Yeah. Go like this. Mm -hmm. Should I? No, <laughs> no, no. And you. Oh! <laughs> and you. Oh. We have a special guest. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's just uh, my invisible thread reel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we're doing it. It's okay. That was terrible. Um, so, you did you want to announce the winner from the Facebook Live Fun um, hat winner? Yes, I did. Um, again, yeah, another great hat. And yeah. I chose Frank Hines. Frank Hines! Frank Hines. Yeah. Yeah. They're my hype men over here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, I, yeah, so we've got... <laughs> we're, we're still clapping for Frank Hines, Frank right? Frank Hines, yeah, yeah. Still clapping for Frank Hines? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Frank Hines! <laughs> I should not have done that. <laughs> oh, dear. Um... Oh, uh, thank you, Ashley, for that. I've lost where I was yeah, because thank that, you so much. The, the face hit with the cards. Um, thank you, Ashley, for that. That was incredible. I'm going to be practicing that. Now, uh, we've got a couple of people in the chat that have, well, not the, we've got people commenting on where they live. So uh, it's good to see everyone here uh, commenting on where they live. So to me, it's crazy that everyone from all over the world mm. can tune in. Yeah, and they're, they're all hanging out, chatting together. 
New York, Sweden. Yeah, we got uh, Spain. Yeah, we got Fiddly Johnny coming in from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Brooklyn coming in from Newcastle. Nevio coming in from Switzerland. We've got Hito from the multiverse. Yeah, which is good. He's obviously <laughs> friends of Doctor Strange. <laughs> I know, right? And, um, he obviously knows Peter Parker, and he's stuck in the multiverse now, which is great. We've got Chad from West Virginia. Country roads take me home. Wait, hey, we should we should probably. I would love to sing some um, John Denver right now, but we'd probably Let's get do it. no. We'll get copyrighted. Ah uh, uh, man. So we can make up. We can make up our own country roads. But you can do a version. rap. Yeah. Well, I don't know if people want to hear that anymore. <laughs> Uh, we lost. So, uh, yeah, we lost. Subs- ears are still bleeding. Yeah, we lost subscribers. <laughs> which is good. Which is what we want in our last show. But we also, of again, oh, we Ireland, ha- Ireland, Africa. Ireland. Hey, hey Ireland. shout out to Ireland. Um, Anyone in beautiful oh. Sacramento, California? Yeah, let us know if you're from. Yeah, someone's from Beaverland. Oh, Sweden. Beaverland. Mm. Someone's from Fresno. Fresno, Fresno. California. Oh, Fresno. Nice. I love that. Um, now we do again have this card here. First person to guess that um, will get sent a brand new cherries before anyone else, before dealers get it, uh, straight out to your hot little spicy hands. Flaming Hot Cheetos. You're going to be able yeah, to smell Cheetos. it. Yeah, we'll get, um, Titan has just discovered Flaming Hot Cheetos, so we'll get him to eat some Cheetos and then package the deck up and send it to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, perfect. Um, now we, we again... We had that giveaway. We've done all of our giveaways so far. What we're kind of doing, we'll choose the winner from the Instagram and Facebook post at the end of the live. So keep commenting on where you live. That would be fun. It was a little messed up. Oh, I was you. just fixing it for you. I appreciate that. It looks now perfect. Camera ready. Yeah. Camera ready. I love it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Now, if you... <laughs> I'm going... Now... Um, if you love social you media, love yeah, social media. social media, and you want to take your social media game to the next level, this this next gentleman, um, he's actually people don't know he's actually a professional mentalist and performing magician. Uh, he took up social media when the global pandemic happened. I can see Titanus looking over the side thing, and I'm not don't know who he's talking about, <laughs> which is a worry. But he he, he started social media when the COVID uh, pandemic happened, and he went from I think a couple hundred thousand followers to he's almost at 20 million. On, uh, Did you so say 20 million? 20 million! Yeah. Yeah. That's a couple countries. That is a couple countries. <laughs> That's a couple countries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he knows the way to uh, do the field of social media. Do the field of social media? Do the I hope so, because I social run social media. Social media field. Yeah, the fields of, of the socials. He knows how to crop it. He knows how to water it and make it bloom. That's it. And now he is one of the most uh, recognized people on social media. Here he is, Joel M. Woo! Joel. Woo! Hello, Joel M here, magician, coffee advocate, rascal, having a good time here in Coffee Rustler, and I'm here to talk to you about a couple of things. Firstly, these amazing cherries, get to that in a moment, uh, but more importantly, we're here to talk about social media. Mmm, it's exciting. It's my whole world. Never meant for it to be my whole world, but over the last couple of years, I've learned a thing or two that hopefully you might find useful. Should you like to grow your brand? as a magician, mentalist, whatever it happens to be that you do. So let's get into it. There's a few things I like to talk about when it comes to social media, and also I hope you don't mind me fiddling here. All us magicians have that weird form of needing to fidget all the time, so I will do that and drink coffee. It's very good. Anyway, uh, there's a a format that I like to sell to people when it comes to socials, which has worked for me and many of my friends. And I think it's pretty much the structure that most people in the social media world use in general, not just magicians, uh, because it works and it makes sense psychologically. And I'm going to break that down in a couple of steps for you. Hopefully uh, follow along. I don't waffle too much. Anyway, social media. So just to give you uh, context on maybe why you might want to listen to me and feel free to not because there's people who do a lot better than I do. But I went from zero, like everybody, about three and a half years ago on my platforms, uh, roughly to just shy of 20 million people. I didn't buy them, I promise. Wink. No, I didn't. And, And that's the point is... Uh, I wanted to do it properly so I could really build an audience that I could then leverage and monetize and use to do live shows, which is sort of what I'm now doing since COVID's gone for the time being, fingers crossed. So how did I do it? It sounds like a weird thing to go from zero to 20 million in such a short time frame. And really, I can give all these ideas loads of praise because I did not come up with them. These are things I've learned off amazing mentors and friends who are doing so much better than I am. And I've just tried to take it and make it work for me. And a lot of it comes down 
as you can imagine, to the actual content. I'm going to say this before I get into it. So many questions that people have about social media aren't the right question. And it's usually well, what hashtag do I use? What's the right caption? When should I post? And a lot of this stuff does not matter until you've got the content down. And the people that typically ask these questions are the same people that maybe only have one or two posts on their social media page. So if that is you, I would implore you to really take a look at yourself and think, hmm, am I actually posting stuff that people like? Now, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and how do we create stuff that people like? Because a mistake I made for years was posting videos that I thought were good, featuring magic tricks, but they didn't get good till about 30, 40 seconds in, sometimes longer, and you could have the best video in the world, but if nobody watches past three seconds, it doesn't matter. No one's ever, they're not gonna know. So the key here is to build a good hook. And simply meaning, if you imagine, you wanted to hook a fish when you're fishing. I don't fish. If you're fishing, you throw out the hook and you hook in the fish. And that's what we're trying to do, but with an audience. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is to cut the nonsense and you want to get straight into your video. So if you're doing magic, and I'm going to be speaking in terms of video, by the way, I'm not an expert in photos, any of that stuff, just video, particularly short form, although, Long form, typically we follow the same format. But anyway, you want to hook the audience in. Best way to do it is just to literally cut the fat and get right into it as fast as possible. You can use uh, clever imagery. If you're using props, you want to make that right center stage so people don't have to think. It could be bright colors. It could be a little circle around what you want people to focus on. But you have to get creative and really think, hmm, if someone was scrolling down the For You page or the Explore page or whatever it happens to be, how would I get them to stop and pay attention to me just for three seconds? I would shoot for even less than that, one to two seconds, that's how you're really gonna get people. And if you want to get ideas on how this might work, what I would say you should try to do is scroll down your, your social media pages and every time you find yourself watching something, stop, go back and think, hmm, why did I watch that? Because I guarantee you there was a clever hook at the start. There has to have been, our brains are now just so ADD that we wouldn't have stopped otherwise, unless it's something that really interests you. But in general, a viral video, if that's what you're going for, not necessarily massively viral, but enough to stop a spectator, has to be a good hook. That's the most important piece of information I'm going to give you. If you take nothing else from this, make the hooks to a video important. That's number one. Number two is, you got to keep them there, because you could have hooked their attention with a Snapchat, which is what every magician does to get their attention, so don't do that. But then you've got their attention, and now there's a big break of dead time, you're going to lose them. You have to keep things moving forward, especially now, as I say, attention spans are getting shorter and you want to keep people there. You want to keep them right to the end of the video. I'll tell you why in a second. So how do we do this? Well, two sides to it. Number one, you can use editing to crop down if you're, it doesn't really work as well for magic because you don't want to really edit too much, but if you can, edit it down so you cut out the beats. I would say your best bet is just to rehearse what you're doing before you film so that there isn't a lot of dead time and get rid of the nonsense, get rid of the stuff that's not important. Once you've done that, I call that cutting the fat. That's when you get into the third step, which is the call to action. Most people hate doing this, but I like to ask my followers and viewers to actually stop, hit follow, subscribe, whatever it is. Why? Well, because I believe that what I'm doing is good and that it makes people happy. And if you are doing magic, it does that as well. So have no shame in asking people to hit the follow button. You could do that with text. You could actually physically ask them. Doesn't matter, but do that. And I guarantee your results will double. A lot of people think it's cringy to do it. Every successful social media person I've seen does it. So, so there's no, there's no argument. Listen, you could try and do it without it. But it's going to make things hard for you unnecessarily. So those are really the three steps. Hook, build up, call to action. If you use those three things, your content will be a lot better. Of course, there's other things like just keeping it simple. Uh, there, I mean, you could talk about the actual choice of trick as well. Those are all important. But if you follow those three steps, you can make something that is inherently bad, probably quite good and quite catchy. So those are my three steps and tips for social media. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram is the best place, at itch2lm, send me a DM, uh, say you saw this. Uh, I should say as well, my choice of cards, and I'm not just saying this, the man behind the camera will confirm as well, when I do magic videos, is the cherries. And the reason for this is, this is actually a bad example, is I use cards that have a bright color. So this talks about getting the hook. If I'm doing a card trick, I deliberately pick things that stand out. Make sure you're picking things that really do stand out and look good. Uh, aside from the fact that I gig with these two, because they don't look like a mad magician's deck of cards, and they actually look like something you would use. 
Fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing the hard sell, but also people, by the way, magicians that use these will know that lay people love the fact that they say casino on them. Weird thing. Anyway, uh, just relating back to the point about wanting to stand out, if you use something that looks nice and is aesthetic to the eye, that's a huge part of what works on social. So make sure you're picking your props well, standing out, getting to the point and telling people what to do, which is following you because you're handsome and you're beautiful and you deserve to be famous if that's what you want. I'm not famous. Anyway, cheers. Thank you so much for teaching us all about social media. And we had a question in, we're watching, we're paying attention, we're not just back there dancing. We had a question come in from Hito Singh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, asking what is a good hook? I'm out of breath by dancing. <laughs> no, me too, me too. Asking what is a good hook? So great question. Uh, I'm assuming from the video, because Joel went thoroughly into everything in there. A good hook is grabbing that person's attention within the first two or three seconds of the video. So by either coming in close to the camera coming back or super hot doing that like what we that did. was a good hook <laughs> exactly like this is the point just <laughs> naturally doing something that people will not be able to look away yes that's it right so what shouldn't you do what shouldn't you hey guys we want to see a trick don't do that we just lost so many yeah. people we, we, we just, lost, <laughs> we just lost so many people i can only apologize don't do that high energy fun if you're going the social media route for your Hookity goodness. That's what they call it in the industry. Now, here's, here's one thing I think. I, I don't think you need that high energy, but you do need concentrated energy. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be high energy, oh, yeah. but you could be concentrated on those cards and your attention is yeah, there exactly. and that will grab others' attention. Like Joel said, if you're on social media and you're scrolling through, stop yourself every now and then and go, hang on, what made me stop on that video? If Why? it was... A monotone, hi guys, welcome to Adjure Trick. Do your content like that. Exactly. Do what feels natural to you and what you actually like. We could not agree anymore. Oh, and I just <laughs> palmed the card. Whoa. I didn't even think about it. You're very good. <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, so I guess keep those questions coming uh, in the chat. Keep those Co geographies coming. Yeah. Where are you watching? Yeah, where are you? Still giving away that uncut sheet. Exactly. So keep that coming on our Facebook and our Instagram comment where you live, where you're tuning in from, and we will send this to you. I want to be like the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, we should do that for every giveaway now. Are you supposed to keep it like yeah, I'm gonna need. Are you supposed to rip it up like I did and just make the deck? No, when, when you get it, you just have to carefully cut it so that you have a deck. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's mm -hmm. so why it's done. You can use an X-Acto knife, you can use scissors, I know you're good enough, you do it just by ripping. You have the just by those feel. precise mm. fingertips. I've done a lot of newspaper tears in my day. There so. you go. There you go. They do call you precise fingers on the, in, the, in the industry. Like, oh, do you know precise fingers? Yeah, precise fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah precise yeah. fingers. Oh, dear, I can imagine PFP, they always call him, yeah. you know, PFP. <laughs> oh, dear, this has gone downhill and I'm okay with that. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Good. good. Um, let me know, geez, where am I up to on my, because this is all scripted. It's insane. It's yeah. insane this is all scripted. But we should probably talk, thank you, Jeff knows exactly where we're at. We are, <laughs> as a special thing for everyone watching right now at home or on the bus, wherever you're tuning in, from uh, people coming in from the Milky Way, we've got a special gift for you. Do you want to tell them a bit about it, Jeff? Yeah, so this deck of cards and the sister deck of cards to it with a different color scheme. Yes. Buy one, get one free from a selection of dealers that there's a website, murphysmagic.com slash seven secrets, and buy one, get one free. So, you know, pay for one, get two. Sounds yeah. like a great deal to me. <laughs> yeah, so you buy a deck, get a deck, buy a brick, get a brick. So I have a beautiful brick right here. Yeah, you could get this brick. Yeah. And you'll get yeah. another one for free. Yeah, <laughs> there how great is that? So buy one, get one free, but it's only at selected dealers. So Merchant of Magic in the UK, SoCal Playing Cards in the USA, and Magos Artenosnos? I can't. Magos? Arte Magos? Yep. Artenosnos. Wait, let me check. Let me check. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that is extra blurry. Yeah, did I get right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and use the promo code... 
uh, Secret Cherry. Again, if you want to <laughs> go check out, we have everything in our website. Um, murphysmagic.com forward slash seven secrets and everything you need to know there, including your promo code, what cards they are, How all that kind of stuff. Oh, good question, Michelle. It is only available for seven days. Keep that seven, seven, seven baby thing going. Wow. Seven days. Who came up with this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard day. <laughs> all right. Um, Someone's a millionaire somewhere yeah. for coming up with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's seven days only. After that, it's back to full price, and you have to buy a brick, and you have to pay for the second brick. For the second brick, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't do that. Don't and be that is guy. Is there a reason you guys pick the black? Oh, good question. Oh, but, but, but that's a secret, <laughs> isn't that a secret? Uh, isn't that a secret? Maybe <laughs> there's something coming up in a couple of minutes' time on why you need these black cherries. So act quick because you need these for the next. Well. I mean, I, we should tell, like Lloyd Barnes is coming to teach you something really cool with the black cherries yeah. that you can't do with any other. So, Or you can just be like Jeff and come and raid us of our cherries. But you need that for the next video, or not the next video, the next couple of videos uh, in, in just a little bit. But we did... In just a wee bit. Wee bit. In just a wee bit. Now, we did have someone guess the card that is here. Did you want to announce the winner? Yeah, if you point... <laughs> the winner... Do you need this? The, please. The He's going to say the wrong one now. Wait, yeah. wait, because this creates a shadow. The winner is... Jeff Price! Oh, Jeff yeah. Price! Oh, Everybody give it up! Okay, no, no, no I'm just kidding. Uh, the winner is... That's a e B. A B? Yeah. Ian Maltby. I hope I said your name correctly, but you have correctly named the... Uh, what did he win? What did Ian Maltby win? Ian Maltby, you won. I can I do this to see the screen. Ian Maltby, you won a deck of cards, the next deck of cherries coming out to you free of charge before anyone else gets it. We'll send it straight. Yeah, and to the you. color is. Ooh. I don't even know. Is there a hint or anything? Uh, oh. Giving me a no face. Oh, we should go to our next guest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what? Well, oh, yeah, I'd love to tell you. The next guest is. Oh, perfect for this. Uh, if you want to, a lot of people don't know how to take. Uh, I don't know when I first got into it, taking pictures of your decks. Uh, and it seems like a very simple thing to do, but to think outside the box, I guess. Outside the, <laughs> the box? Yeah. Don't use that, I apologize. Uh, to think outside the box and take your photo game to the next level and to create a bit more interesting content, um, our next guest is Ryan Smith, who's going to teach you how to take pictures at home with everyday objects that you have to enhance your pictures. I know. You seem, you seem very pumped by it. Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith. I'm super pumped. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Ryan Smith and I'm a commercial product photographer in the playing card community. Today, in collaboration with Cherry Casino Playing Cards, I get to share with you a little bit about the how and why I do what I do. So I often get asked, especially outside the playing card world, why playing cards? Uh, out of anything that you could shoot, why those? And I actually didn't get started in my journey with photography shooting product. I actually started doing travel, landscapes, moved into a little bit of portrait, and even behind the scenes photography for film. Then a couple years ago, as we moved into a pandemic, travel came to a halt. People were less and less likely to come out and get their portraits taken, and film shoots were fewer and far between. I didn't want to stop shooting, so I looked towards a current passion of mine, collecting playing cards, and I decided then that I wanted to take a crack at product photography. Playing cards are my form of collecting art. So taking pictures of them felt like a great way for not only me to appreciate them, but to maybe help others appreciate them as well. I dove head first and over the last couple years, I've been able to develop a portfolio and an awesome relationship with some great people across all aspects of the community. I get a lot of questions often about the how I do what I do. There's a huge assumption across the board, I think, in terms of taking professional looking product photography. And that is that it takes a ton of money and gear to put out great shots. And that's just not the case. 
you don't have to have a lot of money and you don't have to have a lot of gear to put out great shots. This has rung true for me all the way up to this point. I get comments all the time saying, you must have the newest expensive camera or how elaborate is your lighting rig or must be great to have studio space. That's just not a reality for me at this time. As far as my gear goes, I use my Canon 7D. This 13 year old beauty has been a staple of my kit from the beginning. I use a couple different lenses, but when I'm shooting cards, I primarily use my 50 millimeter 1.8. I also consider a tripod and a diffuser slash reflector set as a must have for my kit. When I shoot, I shoot locked down onto the tripod with a two second shutter delay so that I can eliminate any movement or shake from my pictures. Now remember, if your subject and your camera are completely still, makes for a great combination for some of that really crisp focus. Another question I get in regards to the how I shoot is, how do you style the shots? Um, when I'm styling a deck that I have to shoot, I try and ask myself, does this deck tell a story? By that, I mean, does it have an apparent theme? For instance, does it have a music theme? Is it nautical? Maybe it's food themed, could be coffee. And then if it does, I simply just try and complement the story that that deck is already telling. If there isn't an apparent theme or story, then I ask myself, what do I want somebody looking at this picture to feel when they see it? Because I think it's easy to lay a deck of cards down onto some props or some paper of light color and let it blend into the background. But when I style a shoot, I want that deck of cards to feel at home in that frame. And sometimes that just means styling towards a specific feeling. That could look like maybe contrasting colors to help that deck pop, or maybe really pushing the textures to the max. That could also determine what temperature the shoot needs to be, because sometimes warm and cozy or dark and moody doesn't work for that shot. Sometimes we do need a bright backdrop to really make those colors pop. Those are all things that I need to think about. Once I know what temperature I want, I go out and find the light. Like I mentioned before, you don't need an elaborate lighting rig to shoot great shots. So I do most of mine by natural window light. Yes, that means that I am limited to time of day and location, but after a while, you start to look at light through a different perspective and it makes it a lot easier to see opportunities where you might not have seen them before. So sometimes I walk past the table or another piece of furniture, either at home or at work, and I decide right then and there, that's where I'm gonna shoot that next set. After that, I make sure that I have layers. I think it's important to bring depth to the shot. So I try and make sure I have use of props or items that lift the deck off of the surface. Sometimes that could mean putting cards inside something or shooting through or around an object. Or sometimes that's just putting an object in between the lens and the subject that you're shooting. Lastly, I wanna make sure that I get all the shots needed to properly show off that deck or accentuate its features. I try and make sure that I have all the typical angles as well as any other shots that might make that deck look really, really good. For me, the point is to have somebody who sees my shot say, I have to have that. Well guys, that's all the time that I have, but remember, whether you are trying to have more epic grid on Instagram or you're wanting to get into product photography, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get started. Keep shooting constantly, and if you focus on being better than you were last week, you're gonna rock it. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to Cherry Casino Playing Cards for this opportunity. If you haven't got your hands on some, please check them out at Murphy's Magic or your favorite retailer. I mean, we're talking 10 plus colors, crushed B stock from USPCC, and you can't help but love that iconic design. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to check out my Instagram at rsmithcreative. See you around. Oh, All right, baby. so yeah, let me get the spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Run. And, okay. Oh, All right, so hold that, hold that table, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Just your surface. And also work on your zeros a little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what? This is brilliant. That was, I actually learned a lot from Ryan then. That was actually really good. Let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed that as well from Ryan. So thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks for that table, man. Oh, you, of course, of course. You guys said you needed a surface, so. Yeah, you, you, you fell ahead. Yeah. Wow. Right. 100%. Why not? <laughs> That's great. Still, and I got to practice my little zero and my push through shuffle. Know.
I saw that. You were practicing that whole thing. It was good. Yeah, the... So thank you so much, Ryan. That was actually really incredible. Um, I learnt loads from that, and I can't wait to put that in that into yeah. motion. So uh, thank you so much. Um, now, we, 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 we are told... I'm still thinking about, you know, the feel of the photo, you know? Yeah. That's it. It's... it's... How, the, how the photo should fit. No, Ryan's talking about how the yeah. photo... Think about how you want the image to look and mm -hmm. people don't think about how that photo is going to make you feel. Yes, 100%. Yeah. We did. Uh, that, it's, it's how you want people to feel when they see your photo. It's like, it's a work of art, which is great. So thank you, Ryan. Now, we, I just got notified off the screen that we did have another challenge. We had uh, Kingo K... Kingo K? ...asked to... How quickly can you cut to or make the deck into mnemonica? I bet I can do it fastest from a from sealed a, deck. From a sealed deck. Can I get a sealed deck? I mean, you're going to have to give these back. All right. These are so all mine. This now. is the challenge. These okay, two okay, okay. have to get the deck into mnemonica the quickest. Okay. Am I going to time them? Yeah, should we t we should top We should time them. I don't even have to. I feel like open mine to even do it. I feel like. <laughs> you can just. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, if you want to. Do you want to. Are we actually going to open it and do it? Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, get, we're, getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting nods this off, is, off screen. This is a real, a real challenge. Yeah. This is, this is, this Wait, is I gotta get my finger like inside. Do you want to do one? Wait, here. You, whenever you slap these cherries onto the coaster, that's the start. It's almost like the gun shot. Yeah. Oh, that's like the... the this is start. high octane <laughs> watching right now. Yeah. Right. What, what, what you, you do, do the... Right. Well, this is going to probably blow the mic out. But wait, wait. Go. Oh, hands separate. Hang on. Put, put it on the table. You're cheating. I am cheating Oh, yeah. In the table. I'm cheating too. All right, put in the comments below who you think is going to win. Everyone's going to pick Javi. No. <laughs> All right. Vote here, Jeff. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right in the 